Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. I don't have a damn clue what I'm going to do. <laughs> not that I don't have a clue what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a respawn system. But I've come up with, in my brain, I know you probably smell the smoke from there, but um, probably about three different ways of doing it. So I'm going to investigate the one now. And... Since this test map only has one spawn, I'm going to create a second one so that there's more than one spawn. And actually, put a couple of them in here. So I want at least four spawns. And that's so that I can actually. Um, Hopefully, whenever I play this with two players, we'll be able to get um, you know some idea of the actual player's location. So that's what I'm going to try. So let's do this as single player, select one, and I just spawned in spawn point two. Excuse me. You want to get on up out of my damn face? Seriously. Thank you. So if I hit play again, that was actually spawn point three. If I hit play again, spawn point two, it'll randomly pick on its own between these spawn points. So, um, I don't need my gadgets right now. My characters, blueprints. So what I'm going to start off with is, huh, well, let's clean up what we did in the last video. That was the sniper scope. Hit C, and we're going to call this Sniper Scope. Finish up what I started here. So, as you can see, I've got things a little bit neater, a little bit cleaner, a little bit more organized, so that I know what's what and what's where. So, that's good to go. Um, make sure you don't run this off of the input section. Probably, no, actually, run it in here because it's more of a control aspect. So I'm just going to drag some more room down here and zoom in. So what we're going to do here is actually we need to pull in from our event begin play. And we've already got something in here in our event begin play called startup stuff. And that's going to be a non-replicated regular custom event called startup stuff. And it's going to um, add the, the player widget to uh, the viewport, set your game mode, and set the cursor. Um, what I can do is actually expand on this. So during startup, this event is going to happen. And I'm going to go ahead and um, again, I'm going to create an another category called views. And I'm going to put these binocular stuff and scope stuff into that category so that I can get cleaner over here so I can stay organized all right so what we need to do here is create a variable and this variable needs to be what exactly this needs to be respawn transform and I'm going to change that naturally to a transform compile and save now in the case that it actually fails and it reverts back to the default uh, location we need to make sure that we have it 000 change to 00100 um, that for this map is going to be a good default but if you don't know what it's going to be then that can be problematic and hopefully we can get this to work correctly the first time and not have that problem so what we need to do now is upon event begin play we need to set our respawn transform to get our respawn transform other than the default location what I'm going to do is grab a reference to the mesh Meh. mesh and get a little bit of room here and I am going to get world transform 
and it's going to pick up that transform based off of where we actually spawn and how we actually spawn into the map. So in theory, what's going to happen is as soon as we hit begin play, bang, this location is now my respawn location. However, I know that this is going to fail because it's the location at my feet and the way junk is going to work. What's going to happen is it's now pretty much going to be on the zero instead of on 100. So I'm not going to get the proper elevation. So if I come over here and I'm running around the map and suddenly I step on, oh no, a landmine, I'm dead. I'm going to respawn and then I'm going to fall through the world. Nope, we're at 1000 and it went back to there. So we need to fix our functionality at that point. So it didn't go to that. It's just setting our respawn transform. So now we actually need to set up on hmm, our, probably our death mechanism. So this, we need to verify that this is going to actually work. But I'm going to go ahead and say that that's going to fail, so I'm going to come back to that. It's not going to fail completely, but what's going to happen is we are going to fall through the world because it's going to pull that location and it's going to become zero. So here at this point, um, we have our set actor location and rotation during our, our death already in this, and it's getting that world uh, transformed from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get rid of these guys. And this is in my my death custom event, which is multicast event so that it, it handles it and replicates it and everything works lovely. And as you can see here, I already had it to add, and I'm going to get rid of that also so you can see what I'm doing. So we can try to fix this in here and not have to worry about it up there in the other one. So what I want to do here is I want to grab my respawn transform and I'm going to go ahead and break it. And now that I've got my broken transform, this is going to be based off of now, I'm going to go ahead and link it in here so you can see how it's going to fail. So, we're just going to plug in our location and our rotation. So, it's now going to get that information, and now when we die, we're not going to spawn a thousand units above where we died from. So, I'm going to run around, and all of a sudden, bam, I run over a landmine, I die, I'm going to respawn back at my initial respawn point, and it didn't fail. So, okay, that's good. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, but let's go ahead and try again. Bang, we're dead, and where's our respawn going to be? In the correct location. Okay, um, I expected failure and I didn't get it. I only thought I was going to fail. So, And I didn't kill myself, oh no. But, you see, upon death, I told it to go back to third person view. So there we go. So it's going to pick up the random spawn location that you started from when you initially started into the game. So doing it in this method, it was nice and simple. It kept it to where it picks up on event begin play. So now let's actually go in here to do this as two players and new editor window. And again, I know that this may frustrate me and it frustrates probably everybody watching. Of, well, why don't you just resize the windows? And yeah, I know I can resize the windows in the um, the settings, but the only time this is a problem is when I'm actually streaming. Because whenever I do this normally, it's actually going to be one's going to be on one monitor, one's going to be on the other. So here's our server. He started at spawn one. Our client spawned at spawn three. So if the server comes over here and he dies, and boom, dead he's going to respawn back at his original spawn point because that's what he does. So I'm just going to go over here and park him next to this guy and then we're going to go to the client. So now I'm the client. Client comes over here and hey what is this thing here? Let's go into first person mode and boom we're dead. We should go back to spawn number three where we started from and we did. So let's actually test our scope system. Boom. I know it looks crappy in this view because it's, well, um, a skewed window. So we're going to shoot this guy. He's going to blow up and we're going to come out of scope mode. He should spawn right back there again. 
So f with this method, you have a fixed spawn based off the random spawn you initially had when you first got into the game. So let's actually take our client. Let's get out of first person mode. And we're going to go over here. And again, we're going to kill ourselves by stepping on a landmine. Well, I guess I got to fix that landmine. So if I can't die that way, then I will die this way. So he died. And he should respawn right back over there. And good to go. Alright, so that method works. It does exactly what it needs to do. Um, it's probably not the best way because once you, you're playing the game, you realize that, oh, um, uh, Skippy over there just got his ass kicked and he died. I remember where he initially spawned. And if I'm spawn camping him, and I know that he spawned in this location right here, I know that he's always going to be spawning right back there again. So I can kill him and he's going to die and he's going to respawn. He's going to respawn right back there again. So now I know where he's going to respawn from, and I can just trap him down and boom, kill him easily. So what I'll do is I'll try to come up with a better system and do for a different type of respawn. This works. This works fine. And it'll get by in short term because all it's doing is grabbing your initial position. You've got four random spawn points on your map, and it's going to pick up the actual location and rotation Let's, you know, throw these rotations off. Let's face this guy this way. Um, face this guy over that way. And the two are in the corners are facing inwards to the middle. So if I spawn in, see this guy is now, he's facing this direction. Because I got that spawn. I got this spawn this time, and I'm facing that direction. So it saves that information. So now if I come over here and die, boom, dead. Now I want to respawn. It's going to set me in the same basic orientation, but it doesn't matter. It's going to change the camera view based on where I was looking. So if I'm looking in the corner right now, I'm going to come over here and die. I'm not going to change the way I'm looking now. It's going to respawn me, and my camera's in the right direction, but my player's not. It's just not 100% perfect, but a civil re respawn system, it is. And all it took is going into the player base and creating a variable called respawn transform and off of our event begin play which I'm running an actual custom event for startup on, on event begin play you run startup stuff that startup stuff again is just this custom event um, it's gonna add the player HUD to the viewport set your game mode to game mode only get rid of a mouse cursor if you had one and set your world your respawn transform to what your current location is on begin play. So as soon as you spawn into the map the very first time, bang, this is now your, your actual spawn point. So that's how we're doing that, and we just ran that to our death system. And again, since this is all replicated and, and set up for multiplayer, my death, the actual death itself, is a multicast event, and it's going to force us back in third-person view. It's going to set is dead true, which then starts our animation sequence. It's going to disable our character movement by saying set movement mode to none. It's going to give us a delay and then it's going to get a set actor location and rotation that I'm going to get from my respawn transform. I'm going to break the transform to get my location and rotation. I'm not worried about scale so that's not a thing. Um, and then it's going to move. We're not using sweep or teleport. It's just going to set us to the new location as a complete whole entity. It's going to set is dead to false, which is going to reset our status to our regular idle animation. It's going to set our health back to 100. And it's going to set our character movement back to walking mode of walking. Well, our movement mo set movement mode to walking. So that's that. That's, that's how this system actually works is it's pulling when you go to a begin play, it's going to set your respawn transform based off of your current location. That's as simple a system as I can actually make it. Um, the other option of what I was going to do, let's actually save that and close it for right now, was actually, and I'm going to make a whole new zombie system here later, because these are just temporary zombies. So you can create an asset and 
it was going to be something you place into the map and on begin play it's going to actually grab that location so I'm going to go ahead and make a folder really quickly and call that spawns and I'm probably not going to use this system I'm probably going to delete it because um, I'm not sure if it's going to work the way I want to either it are skippy so I'm going to create a blueprint Akator and yes all the multiplayer replication is working for just about everything skippy so this one we're going to call spawn underscore zero one and actually I can call this my spawn master and then whenever I create new ones I can just start renaming them and it'll be like spawn one spawn two spawn three and so forth so this respawn dealy here is going to be simply a cube that we're going to just rescale the Z on the scale to point one and 2.1 do what I told you do it you do it now do it okay so that's that it is bang it's right there and what I'm gonna also do here is come down here and select hidden in game go to hit compost and save now I'm not done with it but if I take this spawn point and I drop it into the map you can see it right there while you're in here in the editor but as soon as you hit play it's invisible you can't see it so I like that option because now whenever I'm in here and oh crap I hit a landmine so and a pizza just exploded next to the car so there I come back to my spawn point and you still you don't see it but as soon as you come back into edit mode there it is so hidden in game is a lovely feature I'm glad they added that so what are we gonna do with this little cube um, well we don't need these two so let's start with um, on event begin play let's cast to player underscore base and let's get our get player character so what we want to do on the very very first when we event begin play and I'm pretty sure this is not gonna work I'm sure it's gonna find a way of screwing me over on this and not working I'm expecting it to fail that's why I went with the other one first because I knew it would work um, it's not the most optimal way of doing it there's probably about 15 different ways you can set up a respawn system to generate you know where you're gonna come back to when you die we've done checkpoints we've done other stuff like that but so what we want to do here is we want to set respawn transform and we need something so let's grab a reference to our cube and we need to get world transform and we can plug that son of a gun in right there so on event begin play it's automatically going to set that but it's only going to set this one so if we compile and save and we put this into the map and again this is just a temporary test this is not the actual and what we also need to do is go back into our blueprints and go into our player and we need to temporarily that system's fine so we need to go into our startup stuff and we need to break this for right now so it's not going to get that in our, our begin play we're gonna rely on whatever gets set on begin play inside of our our character Again, this is probably not gonna work I'm expecting it not to work the way that I want to so got two of them in the map and let's go back to here let's go ahead and throw a third one in here just for giggles now I'm gonna hit play I spawned in here I it spawned one that's nice there's no collision boxes I can walk all over these things it's not gonna affect anything but now we're gonna die because a pizza exploded damn pizzas okay it spawned me here why did pick this location I don't know so let's go over here and oh crap another landmine we're dead where are we gonna go now 
the same one. So it's picked this particular one as our spawn location. Um, but there's three of them trying to set at the same time on begin play. And they're all labeled the same way. So for now, let's go ahead and close everything down. And I'm going to delete the three spawns. No, you ass clown. I'm going to delete those. And now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create child blueprint class. And this is going to be spawn. Actually, let's just try something different here. Delete that. Instead of it being ass master, I mean spawn master, uh, we're going to go with spawn zero zero. That's our master. So if we do child blueprint class now, ah shit, it just called it that. You just don't want to cooperate with my naming convention, do you? To spawn one and I wanted to make it simple to where all I had to do was just drop another one in and it, it changed the number automatically. And we'll do the third. And now we're going to drop one. We're going to drop two is going to be by the light pole. And three is going to be over here by the guys hiding by the barrel. So now on event begin play, it's still, it's setting three individual ones, and we're going to check out this car. This car is awesome. Uh, not anymore. It just exploded because of that damn pizza. So, respawn, and I am here by these guys. Well, okay. Now I'm dead. And, no, it's doing that. It, it's picked its own. So, yeah, I don't like that system either. I mean, the first one works, I, it, and it's, and that's the thing, is it works. I could probably come up with some other ideas on this, but, I mean, hell, success is success, and it's not the optimal way that I would want to do it, and that's not even the right player, that's the NPC master. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this works. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is going back to a system of, doing what I was just doing with those, those spawn points and once I've created a series of like up to eight of them I can pack their actual references into a um, uh, a structure and then come up you know, and assign them a number if you're at spawn point one then that's equal to one if it's spawn point two it's equal to two and that kind of stuff and then what I'll do is I'll I'll store the data, the transforms for the the respawn locations. So on event begin play, you're going to end up writing to those locations because of the map is going to save those locations, and it will then be able to do like a random integer in range, and it'll pick from one through eight, and it'll get that random number and go that way. In theory, that sounds lovely, and it sounds like it would work great. Um, the reality of... Okay, so how will we start with that? Um, we've got the basics in here. We have a default spawn location is going to come from our initial spawn where we come into the map. That's going to be a thing that's going to work. I'm okay with that. But if I create the different spawn points, go into the like a um, level blueprint on event begin play it's going to you know assign these different numbers we don't need event tick event tick is our, our enemy um, but what we'll end up doing is like random integer in range go from one to eight spawn points or however many spawn points are in your map and again we can do the the long drawn out method of doing equal equal and if it's equal to one and run a branch then 
we would then cast to our player base and yeah that's that's not a very efficient way of doing things well anyway the first version works and what I'll do is I'll actually I can come back in here and I will I will make a good solid spawn system so that everything works do a quick rundown here again of what is here and what is working I'm gonna go ahead and go to two players and have this annoying view again and let's hurry up you old slow bastard you're liable to freaking die at any moment so you know you're taking way too long to, to, to change views old and I'm slow okay server we know everything's gonna work on the server we see that the car has exploded oh, you bastard step on a freaking landmine next to me you suck so let's go to the client the client sees that the car exploded but the pizza time bomb is not working correctly I will fix it I just whatever I don't care at the moment so what matters is what the client does so let's actually take the server and let's go park his ass over here and let's grab the, the client okay now I'm the client if I hit V as in Victor I change my view and now I can shoot and I can shoot things and blow them up hit V again I come out of that view if I hit the B as in binoculars I get binoculars but I cannot shoot no problem if I hit V while I'm in the binoculars nothing happens if I hit right mouse button nothing happens left mouse button nothing happens so I'm gonna hit B to come out of binocular view I'm gonna hit the right mouse button and I go to a sniper scope I can't hit the V and change my view I can't hit B and go into my binoculars I'm in that view I can shoot I can do all that stuff and you can see the light went out the light is working correctly and replicated for the client and the server right click I come out of scope mode come over here right click from you know so I'm in third person view I right click I go into my scope mode and bam everybody dies including the player that was standing there and these are just actors they're not real characters so they just pop right back up if you shoot an actor a wall a floor things that are not characters you get a spark effect um, if you shoot a where is it? a player here okay you stand still you shoot a player you get a blood effect get a player or an actual bot you get that blood effect right click to come out of scope mode I was in third person mode so it went back to third person mode if I'm in first person mode and I'm being awesome and I'm just spamming my bullets I can right click go to scope mode right click I come back to the same view that I was in before so that's working just fine come back to this view I am in third person view I'm going to use my binoculars and now whenever I hit B to get out of my binoculars I'm back in third person view but if I'm in first person view and I use my binoculars I close the binoculars back up I go back to the view that I was, I was in before so all the major combat stuff is working and replicated um, let's grab a server and stand over here where he can see in the server view the grenade and the pizza I'm gonna grab the pizza which is a landmine and you can see it vanished from the server view which is fine I'm taking the the time bomb pizza out for right now but the grenade is working for the most part I go and pick up the grenade and it disappears from both views and now I'm at my max of five grenades so when it respawns again if I come over here to pick it up it's not letting me pick it up because I have the max amount let's go over here to our server same thing I have four grenades and let's grab some landmines and let's grab another grenade and let's wait for a respawn again on the grenades and now I can't pick it up because I'm maxed on grenades now if I come over here and 
attempt this. If I hit the number one key, I spawn a, land, a time bomb, but the client doesn't see it. I haven't spent that much time working on the pizzas. I'm not going to use them in the main map. So there we go. It does actually work, but the client is not able to... Um, if I hit one, it doesn't. It spawns for the client and not for the server. It's going to be an easy fix to get it done. It's just low on the, the, the food chain right now. I know. Food, pizza, bad joke. Um, and it didn't uh, do the damage as well. So I'll come back over here and try it again. You will die from pizza. More than likely, I will too, because, you know, cholesterol. And I love pizza. Anyway, so... Boom, blows up. See, it didn't do the damage. I'm not worried about the pizza time bomb. It was just a fun little trinket. So let's um, get the server in a position where he can see the guys in the corner and he can see the light post. Go back to the client. We're going to right click. We're going to zoom in. This is a shootable landmine, so I'm going to shoot it. It still needs to be fixed. It's not working on shooting. But if I come over here and step on it, you see it's not working correctly for the client. So that one's not fixed yet either, so it won't be in the map. But you can see it, it's still in there. So I'm going to shoot the guy on the left. And for now, the client and server can't see the um, the particle effects of the actual um, the shooting impacts. It might be a good thing or a bad thing, but you know what? So that works. The um, the light, if you watch it on both the server and the client, bang, works just fine. All right. So the version that I'm going to release as any early, 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 just let's go blow some crap up, have some fun. Um, is going to be again I'm going to do this and I'm going to close this video out short because we, we, we got done what we needed to do in this video I'm going to quit carrying on for an hour and a half after I actually finish fixing it so let's go to the map and we've changed the map over and we're calling this BR map for the Battle Royale map so I'm going to go ahead and go actually to my main menu map we're going to change this back to one player and playing standalone game so this is this is going to simulate how the game plays if you download it right now well as soon as I get it uploaded and actually go to play it all right you can hit single player and it will and you see your steam username and avatar just like with all my projects like this you need to have the um, thing running so that you're actually having steam in the background so with the map you can go in like the V is in Victor will give you your first person shooter mode and you can shoot things they blow up V will change you back to your normal mode right clicking from any view will put you in scope mode right click again will take you out of scope mode and so forth so it remembers what views you were in whenever you go to and from those Binoculars, you can see it has a nice zoom to it. Um, let's go out of the binoculars, go into the scope. And what I'll do in another video is I'll actually um, upgrade the scope and the binoculars to have a zoom effect by rolling your mouse wheel. I still like that. It changes the color, the lights go off, the car changes to a different type, and then explodes. And has radial damage, so if you're standing next, you know, close enough to it, you're just toast. So we'll do zombies in a different video. Um, I did not work on this area here just yet. Um, there are some issues with the door frames. You can't walk through the door frames. So I, I know what the problem is. I just haven't taken the time to fix it yet. Um, this area over here, all these barrels and propane tanks, it was having an issue is whenever I'm sitting here just going to town and I shoot one of these things, one causes the rest of them to blow up and it was tossing a major error whenever I had the um, the propane cylinder number one 
So I had to remove them from that cluster. They still work, they still explode, they still replicate, they do what they need to do, but they just have a, an issue with, um, yeah, Unreal Engine 4 in general. <laughs> so I just didn't put those into that cluster of stuff. I did go ahead and add in this demonstration map a way of getting to this rooftop, which now lets you go ahead and get to all of these roofs. So you can see there is the short one. I'm going to go into my shooter mode. So you can see it does still work, but it just did not like cooperating with other explosions and destroy actor and it was throwing false infinite loops and it was just doing stupid junk. And I just fell right the hell off because the jump system sucks in Unreal Engine 4 by default. Um, but yeah. So you can use that method of getting from rooftop all the way over to here, but not to here. But if you want to get on this rooftop, then... And yes, that barrel does blow up. I've tried to find every one of those barrels on the map and replace them with the exploding ones. But if you want on the roof of this building, come over here, go here. And this was in here on the default base demonstration map. And I threw a uh, propane cylinder right there. I'll probably put one or two more here and there because if you're going to sit here and be a nasty camping ass uh, sniper and shooting bad guys, the range is set to 6,000. I don't know if I need to tweak that or not, but see, it's not hitting him at all. So I need to probably tweak the distance on shooting. I can shoot him, but I can't shoot the clown. So I'll fix that really quickly and. Let's go ahead and, again, die. I'm dead. No. <laughs> One sliver of health. Really? Just not quite enough to die. That'll finish it off. I could have used a grenade, I guess. But, um, but there are no landmines available in this map. So when I first started, so this is my spawn point forever for right now. Until I come up with another respawn system, that's my respawn point. But if I exit the game and go back into it again, main menu, go to multiplayer, I can either find a game or host a game, give it a name, hit make, and go into it, whatever my spawn point. So now this is my spawn point. So if I come over here and I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing, or I get shot, or a grenade goes off, well, the grenades are just going wherever the hell they want to go. And again, just not quite enough to kill my ass. So, my spawn point was right over there. That's going to be my infinite spawn point. And I fell through the damn world. So, I'm glad it's doing it now so that I can see it. I knew whenever I, I told you guys it was going to fail at some point. Let's go back to the main menu and exit. So... Lots of things we can do to fix that issue. I'm going to go with the simple fix for now. Go back to my player base. Getting my respawn transform from where I initially spawned in. And I'm going to go back to... See, isn't this so much neater to look at? Um, go back into my death system right here, where I told you I knew it was going to break at some point. And I'm going to move my transform. And from location... I'm going to drag off from here, and I'm just going to add a plus, so vector plus vector. So I'm going to do this and this for my location now. And what's going to happen is I want to add 100 to this. All the spawns are outside, and it should no longer have a problem with where I spawn. So compile and save, and play in selected viewport which is not going to let the steam functionality work it's going to break when you're in this mode so i'm going to go into single player just because essence of time and okay it put me in the same spawn that's perfect so i'm going to go over here and boom kill myself and what should happen is it should spawn above the ground and fall down a little bit or be at 100 minimal so it worked flawlessly that time i'm going to try dying one more time And let's check our respawn. Good to go.
All right, so we'll try it one more time, play, see if it gives me a different spawn point, and you asshole, you gave me the same damn spawn point. There we go. Different spawn point this time. <laughs> it's purely random between the, the several respawns that I've got in here, but it's funny that it shows the same one several times in a row. It's okay, we're dead, hands off, and we respawn above the ground, and we're, we're all set. That should fix the problem. However, short term, if you choose to download this version and play this version, then if you do, if you're not the host, if you're a client, and you fall through the world, then you're gonna have to hit um, just well kill the game. Um, just nothing that I can do to resolve that any other way temporarily. But um, some other considerations, and I, I hate to keep stretching this video out here um, with the respawn system. To ensure that you don't fall through the world um, I could if I wanted to go down below the ground create an actor that actually extends under the ground of the entire area that I'm in because if I fall through the world I'm gonna fall for an infinite amount of time let's try changing my kill Z to negative 2500 okay and I'm going to right click and actually let's right click and play from here we're we're under the ground and get to that point it kills us but what happens now we can't we can't respond we're stuck we can't do anything um, I mean hell you can hit escape but you know it's not going to bring you back to here. So let's go back underground again and check for play from here. When we fall underground, if I hit escape, that's going to, because uh, I'm in this this mode, it's just not going to work. Um, I can't throw grenades. I can't hit my binoculars or anything else. I'm pretty much screwed at this point. So the kill Z, I guess a temporary stopgap as a what do I do if this happens if I fall through the world how do I, I respawn because I died that way I was killed and if you try to do kill cast to kill whatever that's just not going to do anything for me I want some way of having a fail safe I don't know if this is going to work or not keyboard I don't care what it shows um, for right now. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change that to um, keyboard P as in Papa, as in pretty screwed up. But you could also hide that into it where you have to hit Control and P or um, Alternate and P or Shift and P or command if you're on some weird shit thing that has a command key but you can add those in there and it will compound it to where if it's if you check this box then it says alt p so you have to hold down the alternate key and hit p and it should allow you to do whatever you do in this this thing here and let's set actor location and rotation Let's grab our respawn transform and let's break it. So this does have something to do with with um, actually the, the topic of respawning. So let's do that. We're going to reset our, our spawn location. Let's go ahead and do the same thing just to be on the safe side here. But we're going to do it differently. We're going to do plus. So we do vector plus vector. And I want this to actually give us a larger number. I want to get our Z plus 5,000. I want there to be nothing that prevents us from spawning above the ground. So come in here and I'm going to
play from here and force it to kill us. We can't move. Nothing is working. I'm going to hit alternate P, and that doesn't work either. Shit. Okay. Um, we're still stuck underground. So no matter what, we're falling, and alternate P does not work. So I would say then, as a stopgap measure for that, instead of Alt P, let's delete that, compile and save, is possibly even going into the the map itself and creating an actual uh, your own box collision that you would scale up and let's say spend some time making sure your respawns don't fall through the damn ground for one. But coming up with a failsafe, you could probably do a box collision somewhere that encompasses all the underneath of the map so that um, if you do fall through the world for some unknown reason, you hit this collision box and it does an auto teleport. So you auto teleport the character if their elevation is below a certain level. Um, I mean, who knows? You could probably come up with a system for doing that in the player and I don't want to do an event tick but let's see here event tick yeah see I don't even have an event tick anywhere in my player so whatever I typed it in if I did it would have zoomed over to that point um, but for testing purposes um Yeah, I got you. Makes sense. Just trying to come up with a, a failsafe from preventing it from actually happening. And if you go into your map and change your kill to negative um, 25,000, so it's a much deeper depth there. And save all. And actually, I'm pretty sure you can actually come up with a an altitude check. So if you, you get your... Um, like your mesh. I don't think, um, in the division, there were places where you could go that you could glitch that would allow you to get underneath the map, and people were doing that and cheating, and you know, get world location. Um, Yeah, that's true, too. It probably will be good to come back and do something like that also, but um, I want to get the vector here and actually break vector so that I actually get the, the Z. I just want the Z. And it is a float and let's do float is less or what you do um since it's a negative number when you fall below zero you're going into a negative number so that we float less than float and then set the um right there to 25 actually negative 2500 So it's going to check to see if your world location is below negative 2500. And this is just spitballing here or something. And I don't like using event ticks to begin with. They're great short, short term, but I've just about got all of the event ticks removed from everything in here now. So, um... so we just wanted to verify that, run that branch. And again, this is going to be something temporary that I'm probably going to end up deleting here shortly. And do like what John's talking about. If you guys got a project that's absolutely kicking your ass and you want to 
be able to get to a, a faster resolution on your problems, um, get with John. He has a really affordable service for uh, for helping people. I mean, really affordable. So, and that's an important part: is he affordable and he's good. So, yeah, he knows his shit. So that's that's a good thing. Me, I'm just a freaking hack. I love... This, to me, is the game. I don't give a shit about the actual first-person shooter, third-person shooter. I don't give a shit about the game. It's the puzzle trying to make shit work for me. That's what, what the, yeah, the game is. And then I get the project to work. It starts doing everything that I want it to do. And then I archive the project and never use it again. Or it doesn't work, and I get pissed off, and I just delete the damn project. <laughs> I spend more time just making shit than I actually do caring about uh, getting the full game out. Now, see, that's the Unreal Engine 4 mentality. If it ain't broke, fix it till it is. That's that's how it works with Unreal Engine 4 stuff. But I can amend that. If it doesn't apply to... Cool. Yeah, we'll... we'll... We'll check on the houses here later because those are going to be important for that other map. Um, yeah, it, if it doesn't apply to Fortnite, then we're going to keep breaking it until you get frustrated and never come back. Um, so yeah, set new world location and we'll just grab a screw it and grab a, this guy and break it, or learn how to spell and break. Get our location from that, set our actual location, and bang. This, I guarantee, is probably not going to work. But, you know what? Again, it's the puzzle, trying to figure out if shit works. So, if I'm over here, and I play from here, and I fall through the world... Oh, you suck! What did I do wrong there? Um... It's getting my Z height of negative 2,500, and then it should be setting my, my re oh, <sighs> because I'm retarded, never mind. Because I, it gets the respawn transform, is got from our, where we spawn into the map. So, no matter what, I respawn, I spawn into the map underground, so it's stored by respawn location as where I started from. So, that wasn't the problem, John. It was, it was the, the reference to where I get my respawn transform from. It gets my respawn transform from event begin play in the startup. Uh, it says here, on begin play, get reference to the mesh, set your, uh, your world transform of your mesh to your respawn transform. I spawned in under the world, so it set my respawn transform to under the world. <laughs> That's and it kept hitting the negative twenty five hundred, and it kept going back to under the world and back. So yeah, I actually just need to go ahead and do this. It's going to get my respawn transform because I didn't naturally fall through the world. I spawned under the world, so that's where my respawn is. Yeah, I'm not into the Battle Royales or Fortnite. I did, I will say, I downloaded, I installed, and I played one battle of Fortnite. I killed two people, and then got killed, and I'm like, this is just not fun. So, I uninstalled it, and I've never looked back. So, because my my spawn point for testing is is underneath the world, I spawned in initially on begin play underneath the world. So that's what the problem is. I'm going to go ahead and add a variable in here that shouldn't be a necessary thing, but we're going to increase our initial spawn into the world location at a stop gap here. We're going to add 10,000 to that. So no matter what, if I go below 2,500, then it's automatically going to spawn me back to my respawn. And for right now, I'm going to put this in here because of the location of my testing. I am respawning under the world. So it's going to naturally, whenever I hit play from here, that's my spawn location. So now it's going to grab me and throw me directly up in the world. 
I don't have to be that drastic on the, the height of it, but it'll work now because of that. I can just do plus 3,000, not 30,000, because I'm starting and I'm verifying that it, I'm not exceeding 2,500, so it's just going to add 3,000 to wherever I spawn. So if I accidentally spawn underneath the world, and again, I'll play from here so I can physically break it. When I hit to negative 2,500, it will automatically just teleport me back, and now I'm above the world. But here's the thing is, now that I die, my respawn transform is going to be up in the air. So, or actually below ground, because I forced myself to spawn here. Um, so this will actually come back out. That shouldn't be a thing. It shouldn't be a problem. So if you do a normal uh, spawn and you spawn above the world, but then you suddenly fall out of the world, then it will detect your your Z height. I just kind of compacted them underneath there for neatness, but uh, so it's just going to get your your Z height and see if you're your altitude is less than 2,500. And it's not the best method in the world, but that's just all it's going to do. It's just going to check to see if you've fallen below negative 2,500. It prevents you from ending the kill Z, which then in the kill Z, I could go into the player controller and set it up that way. But I don't even think I have a player controller set up in this project. I'm using a default player controller. Um, game mode... HUDs, no. Um, I'm not actually using anything but the um, the default. Yeah, player state. I never did make it my own custom player state, so or game states or anything else like that. So that's my failsafe. I hit play, and again, probably not optimal to let that run on event begin play because it's still or on an event tick. Again, setting careful spawns will prevent that from having to to be a problem. Um, the fix for the door issue is actually the capsule component of the player doesn't necessarily match the body good enough. So you can actually go to the capsule radius and I'll just put it down to 38. It'll thin it out a little bit. I can probably even do 36. And that makes the, the capsule a little thinner. It's still a little bit high for the player's head, but I've not had much success fixing the, uh, the height on that. So it's still an issue. But I've noticed that on some of these, it's there's an issue with other ones. I can sit there and keep tweaking this until I get it just right to where I can pass through here. Um, it's not that big of a deal. event called unpossess event unpossessed so that would actually be the event then let's try that I mean you can always just break that as a stopgap go back into the map and change my kill Z just take out one of those or two of those zeros so it's back to 2500 again unpossessed but then it's more than just a um, setting an actual location at that point though um, old controller I'm sure it's going to get a new controller but um, Or fine here. So no, I'm clicking on the frickin' dot. Even though the um this doesn't actually really matter all that much, whenever you're actually in third person view and you're changing your camera rotations and everything else. So event unpossessed. Um, 
no, that's just going to set actor location. That's not going to actually repossess the character. And not have much l luck with, um, because I don't have anything but player spawns. I don't actually have a, um, a physical dropped in player into the map. These are actually just player spawns. Event unpossessed. Because, I mean, you got, um... Event possessed and event unpossessed. Or I could have just done... Instead of that, I do this, and um, That's, um, spawn actor from class, I would imagine. Um, then spawn transform, we have a respawn transform. Um, from beforehand, though that respawn transform is not going to be valid because if you initially you won't initially spawn below the ground um, so you'll have spawned at some point and it's going to get that transform and then owner is well there is no owner because you've been unpossessed you're not owning anything yet and the instigator is pawn object reference yeah. it's actually for right now let's bypass that so fall fix it's running this custom event whenever the player actually falls. Um, well, it doesn't matter. This is this could have all been done down here. But same Shiite. This thing is, I'm taking a, um, here's where it's going to come into the fact that I'm going to have to test something, and let's hit the P key, and set actor location, you know, I just wanted a regular set location, you bastard, set actor location to zero zero negative one thousand so I can force my character to fall now to go underneath the world so I actually go in here and I actually get a spawn point this is fine I've already got it set and then if I accidentally do that and I fall through the world yeah, see, it's just... That's something I'm to, to really look into. Because doing that, I'm, I can set my actual location to, to, to purposely fall under the world, but it's not running this. Unless I'm actually...
get player character or controller. Again, this is unknown territory, so. Instigator, wouldn't that be. Yeah, let's. Um, definitely something to keep screwing with, because I think it's got a lot of possibility to do for for a fail-safe system. So if you do fall through the world, it... Yeah, see, so that's why I, I set it up to spawn normally. I'm good to go. It's set on the event begin play. It's set that as my respawn location. That area, that is that is my respawn. So, I mean, if I come over here and I'm running around and holy shit, I die, it's going to respawn me back over there. But in the odd situation that I fall through the world, it's just getting my current location and just throwing me down a little bit. It's all it's doing whenever I hit P. And what I did from there was, was that. So if I actually um, come over here on Unpossessed and do a Make Transform and physically put in zero 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 and we'll just do a thousand so it'll spawn me above the ground and it should fall then the actual location being zeros so I actually have a spawn point that's good that's lovely it's working come over here die I'll respawn normally back to where I initially started my spawn location so that's all right, but if I, oop, crap, I just fell through the world and died, it should then detect that I've unpossessed and then go from there. And it are not. Event unpossessed. It's spawn actor uh, player base. And then it's getting the location of where I wanted to do that. Um, let's dump that. Yeah, but um, player controller. But. Cast to player controller and do it from there. But get um possessed there. And it don't want to go from there. Well, see, that's just getting a player controller, and it's inheriting it from itself. But if I don't plug in anything here at all, it's going to say that there's nothing there. So you got to plug something into it. It doesn't want the from there. Okay, well. there and still a server event but what you freaking connect but would that be connected to here though I and mean, try it without but
Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Um, that and Felted World. And no. <laughs> So, event unpossess, spawn actor, player base, and give me a location of zero, 00 plus 1000. Um, player controller there. Because I need a reference to the player controller for the, um, the spawn actor. And then. This has nothing to do with anything. This is just going to cause me to fall into the world and die. Collision handling override. That's the actual actor reference class. But it's casting to this. It's casting to the same blueprint. It's, it's spawning that in. Um, I'm, this doesn't need to be actually in the player itself, though. It should be run somewhere else. Because um, if it's inside the player base, you know, the player itself... Alright, so we're in the world, everything is lovely, oops, I fell through, it kills me, and it says hello, It's it sees that, but it are not spawning an actor, but let's try and find out here. Alright, so running around, everything's good, I fall through, I are die, and it sees that point. It sees a spawn actor from class. But it's it it's like it doesn't destroy the old one to allow me to um, create a new. So if I actually print text to there and come in and play, running around, I fall through the world. Yeah, see, it, it gets all the way to the end for possessed there, too. So, still, no joy, because it are don't like the possessed node. Yeah, um... Something to keep fooling with, because I mean it's it it gets true to this point right here. I mean, if I even come back off the end and force it to fail again, and come over here. All right, I'll try that. It falls through, and it says hello, so it gets through there. It's just. Get controller return value is accessing is coming back as none.
Um, just delete that and break these lines manually and just go from there. Return value goes to target. It then creates that, which is a last hit by. Then controller doesn't go to the pawn. Get controller has to go to the target. Yeah, this is something to come back to. I mean, I was just trying to come up with a fail-safe system in case the player falls to the world. Um, all of my spawn points should be functionally working correctly. No event tick. You don't get to live at all. You get murdered. No event ticks. I'm doing everything I can to get rid of all these event ticks everywhere and trying to get my... Um, my blueprints looking a little bit nicer overall and you know not organized correctly but they're they're semi organized and oh well I've already deleted everything but um server applied damage I was running into some issues here and there with um with the replication on everything, but I mean replication on everything is working, except for on the. Um, I just got to fix the the mines, and I just haven't cared. Um, let's see here. Just doing. I'm gonna have to come back and isolate a few things, and the way I was breaking down stuff before, like for like shooting and stuff like that to try to get everything to work correctly and replicate correctly was so having to go back in and break parts of it that shooting works I'm gonna have to come back in here and, and change something on my shooting system it's applying damage everything's working correctly that way but I need to add impulse to my actual um, shooting mechanism because what's happening is whenever I shoot these targets not, not these in particular. These are, are static. They're not going to move anyway. But what's happening is whenever I shoot them, they're not getting any radial... They're not getting any impulse or any force because there's no projectile. So it's not enough to actually knock the thing over because there's no force being applied to it. So I need to go in there, fix that, delete all these targets that are in here and replace them. And yeah... Because you got like this uh, practice pistol range over here. Definitely like this right here. You want to come in here and and shoot them. You want them to move. And there's no there's no force applied when you actually are firing. So I just need to go back in there and edit that and add impulse into it so that they actually get some thump whenever they actually get hit. Um, that's what I had set up on my other the shooting FPS shooting demo was I just hate first person shooters that they use FPS um, mannequins but I mean I can go in here and just actually be on the details panel you dumbass um, but the particular one that I've got is this actually change maps I'm not screwing around with this one this map is good to go um, everything is where I need to be on this map. I might spawn a few extra bots here and there. I'll still go back in and redo the zombie system. Um, but the time I try to do any editing, I try to do it all in the test map. So like this target right here. If I come in here and shoot. Get my damn way. Nobody invited you in front of me. There's no impulse being applied. So if I actually run into it, I can knock it over. I haven't set the mass right yet, but um, I want to be able to set some radial force or, or impulse to the actual um, because die. So I can knock things over whenever I shoot them. Um, it might create a little problem with shooting players, and all of a sudden you're you're actually. Um, 
knocking him back and screwing with the physics assets and all that kind of crap. But whenever I was setting up the um, little symbol system of <coughs> when I'm applying damage, I run a sequence right here, did cast to character. And as a character, if it's detecting that it actually hit the character and a, a character item, then it's going to apply the um, emitter of blood. But if it's not a character, it plays the, the little impact sparks, which is something I just modified from another one. So shoot the ground, shoot the propane tank, maybe shoot a player, and you get a little blood. Skippy would get some blood. These guys are not... Oh, you bastard! You don't see me trying to do shit over here and you gonna step on freaking landmines? You asshole. Here, let me let me give you something here. No, don't you be running around. You, you stay right over there, too. Have a pizza, you son of a bitch. Oh, you're gonna run away? I got more pizzas. Don't worry. You're the asshole I want. Have a damn pizza. <laughs> But yeah, the um, the these guys right over here. These are actually actors. They're not actually characters. They're, they were a stopgap that was just a, a base target to play around with. They can take damage. They can they can vanish. But since there's no character movement, no kind of crap like that, I didn't worry about setting up animations for them. But you're lucky. I don't have any more pizzas. You son of a bitch. But I do have a sniper scope. So, yeah, that's that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and... Hey, get in front of me. I'm talking. Damn clown over here, too. Here, let's blow his ass up. Get out my damn view. Thank you. Um, yeah, you better run. Have a couple damn grenades. So, yeah, I never did readjust the radial... Uh, the, the damage setting on the other uh, grenades. I don't care. I still got some more work to do with all the, the fine tuning shit and whatnot. Go away. I don't like you. Um, but again, everything is working that, that needs to be working for right now in replication. Whenever you're in third person view and you go into right click, it goes into your scope mode. Whenever you right click to come out of scope mode, you go back to third person view. If you're using your binoculars and you're checking out your people and oh, I'm going to kill you so good, and especially you for getting in my view, you can't right click and go into the scope mode. You can't hit V and change your view mode. You have to come out of your binocular mode and then you can go into your shoot mode, which is V for first person mode. But if I'm in this mode already and I hit my sniper scope and then I come out of my sniper scope with the right mouse button it goes back to the previous view that I had set up so same thing here I'm in first person view I got this ugly cross here I go to binocular view I come out I'm still in first person view same thing with the scope if I'm in third person view go to scope come out of the scope I go back to third person if I go into my binoculars, come out of binoculars, I go back to the previous state of where I was before all my views. Everything works, everything replicates that needs to replicate. Everything is all fun, everything's all happy. I just need to go in here for right now and I need to actually blow some shit up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pack this whatever version and I will put a playable link to it on Discord. I'll upload it to probably Google Drive for right now just to do a little bit of multiplayer testing, just run around, shoot some things, spitball some ideas with whoever's playing, and get some ideas of what we need to do next and so forth. Uh, what I am going to do is go into Editor, uh, Edit, Project Settings, and I need to go to Packaging, and I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to open up this. going to scroll down. I have two maps that are already set up in here main menu map and the lobby map. I'm going to change that lobby map because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to find this is the project that I'm actually in. Go to my map folder and I'm using BR map as the primary map for shooting and playing and goofing around on so that's what I'm going to do. Now 
whenever I go to package, it's only going to package these two maps. It's going to ignore all these other demonstration maps and everything else, so it's not wasting space, in other words. Targeted hardware, that's fine. Platforms, I'm only doing Windows. If you have an Apple product, piss off. No love. Um, so yeah, that's good enough here. Um, maps and modes, it's still set up okay for that. Going to main menu, that's fine. Everything else should be good with the way I've got everything set up. Um, yeah. So I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder for it. Now the scope and the binocular screen masks, I put that in bbg underscore demos in my Discord channel. So if you want those two um, full screen masks for the binoculars or the scope, feel free. Jump right in. I put the PNG files right there so that whoever wants them can grab them. I will share the love and create a new folder on my hard drive. Now you can't see what I'm doing because I'm on a different monitor. New folder, we're going to call this Shooter Demo. Apparently I already have a Shooter Demo folder. Um, nope, now I don't, so we're good to go now. So I just created a blank folder on my hard drive, on my effing drive. And now I'll just do this, file, I'll start this packaging and I'll stop the stream and then I will be available on Discord. I'm going to take a quick break and then um, get this uploaded and I'll put a link in the general uh, channel for Unreal Engine 4 on my Discord. And um, whoever is available who is and is on the East Coast Steam region, <coughs> Skippy and... John and maybe a few others might uh, be watching is um, download it and let's go shoot at each other a little bit and, and knock things around see what we can get to fail and see what, and what needs to be done next so we're going to package it for our Windows 64 bit I'm going to select the shooter demo folder and select folder I'm not going to bother showing the output log because last time I did that while I was streaming, it decided it was going to lock the hell up and cause the world to stop spinning and turn the other direction and and dogs are eating cat food and cats are eating dog food and just ruin the freaking planet. So I'm not going to show the output log. This shit works. So I'm going to go ahead and take a break and whenever I get it, uploaded. It's probably going to take me another 15 minutes or so to upload it once I see what the file size actually is. Um, being that I have I, I've got Polygon Nature in here, it should only package what I, I need for the project to work, but we'll see. I've put Polygon Nature in here and I've slightly started adding a few of the items in here, replacing some trees, some shrubbery and stuff like that. So We'll see how little we can get this um, to, to pack down to, and we'll go from there. Shit, we've got a whole animation starter pack in here. Thank God I don't have that stupid ass. Um, uh, and it's great if you need the, the materials and, and sounds and junk, but um, yeah, the starter content, that's 700 megabytes worth of crap. So as soon as this gets done packaging, I will get it uploaded, and let's play around with it shoot some crap and see how it works all right guys i'll be back shortly and i will be available on discord as well we'll see you guys soon